Good morning. Glad you're here today. Ryan, thank you so much. Great songs you picked out. Oh, wait, I picked out three, didn't I? <laughs> you did a good job, though. You were fired up, too. I appreciate that. Mike Mauser, thanks for keeping us on track. We kind of got off track on the way we do things, but that's okay. Mike, thank you for the beautiful prayer. It was well, well prayed. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to see Logan and Rachel and Jason and Sharon. They even brought her this week. It's glad to have you guys. It's good to see Sarah from Medina. Hey, Sarah. It's good to see you. And uh, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Good to see you. Good to see Cody's people back. Grandparents. Glad everybody's here. Andy Six is here. Andy, we got a, we got a job for you, by the way. So we'll talk to you about it later. But anyway, Andy Six, he's a great guy. Just glad to be here. Before we start our sermon, let's go to God in prayer because I'm just very excited about this lesson. It will preach, it will live, and it's going to be glory for God. I guarantee it. Let us pray. I do, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, God, simply for just who you are. You are the great God I am. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the Almighty God. And Lord, you blessed us with your son, Jesus. And we thank you for Jesus. And we love Jesus. And we give Jesus glory, honor, and praise. And we do collapse at his feet and worship Jesus. Because Jesus loved us enough to leave heaven and to die for our sins. Thank you so much, Jesus. Help us all to follow in Jesus' footsteps, to love others like he did, to care about others like he did, and to be like Jesus. Be with us, Lord, as we talk about your unconditional love today. Help us, God, to speak this sermon for you. Help us, God, to live this kind of lifestyle so that we can change our world into what you want it to be, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Unconditional love. God's unconditional love is what we're going to talk about today. One of the reasons why we want to talk about love is because everyone wants to be loved. I don't care who you are, you want to be loved. Now, I've been around people said, I don't care, you don't have to love me. I don't care. But they are just lying. Everybody wants to be loved. In fact, all human beings need love, cannot live without it. They did a test on babies a while back. I can't remember when I read this or I studied it or something. But all I remember from the study was that they had a few babies that they changed and fed and they held them and they hugged them and they loved them and they sung to them, maybe even read stories to those babies. And those babies were quite healthy and went on to be great people. But then they had a few babies where they just fed them and they changed them and that's it. And eventually those babies died. That's because we need love. We need nurture. We need hugged. We need told that we're important. That is just a fact. Love gives us reassurance that we will be cared for and helped in times of need. The need for love and affection solidifies our desires to know we are compatible with another human. For that reason that was just stated, we seek and we search for true, perfect love. And in our country, we do it in so many weird ways, but it seems like to be movies and TVs and, and songs is one way that inspire us. It, um, we're inspired by movies and songs. And, 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 and I can remember as a kid coming up, I love to watch Love Boat. Because love boat, you would come on the, on the boat, you'd be single, and then you'd meet that pretty girl. And by the end of the ship, you're getting married. And it was always a happy ending. Who don't like a love story with a happy ending? I love them. The Hallmark Channel. Yes, I love the Hallmark Channel. I'm a big man, and I'm proud to say that I love the Hallmark Channel. It has a recipe for great movies. Guy meets girl. Guy falls in love with girl for the first hour and 40 minutes and then with 20 minutes to go, they break up. And then you got 20 minutes to put that love back together. 
and they get married. I love the Hallmark Channel. Greg, you got to watch the Hallmark Channel. Watch it with your wife. She'll love you for it. It's a beautiful story. And some of those Hallmark movies make me cry. They just pull at my heart. And I love it. How about The Notebook? How many of you have seen The Notebook, the movie? That is one of the best movies I've ever seen in my life. Because this young guy falls in love with this young girl. She's pretty. She's hot. She's everything that a man could ask for. And he just loves this girl. And they finally get married because the parents didn't want them to get married. They had to fight through the parents. And they finally got married. And then by this time, she falls in love with another guy. So he still has to prove his love for her. And eventually, she has to make a decision. And she chooses that guy. And at the end of the movie, when she's old, she couldn't remember who she was let alone who her husband was. But you know what that husband did? He stuck by his wife. He moved from his house to the old folks home that she was living in and he stayed right by his wife. And he would sing to her and he would read a book that they wrote. It was a notebook that, of memories that they had and he would read to her. And every now and then she'd come out of that uh, stage of, um, you know, of unsure of what she didn't know. Uh, what they call that? Help me. What? Yeah. Yeah, dementia. She'd come out of that and she would be herself again and, and then they would dance and be singing and, and it was great. And at the end of the movie, they died together in the hospital bed. That's love, baby. That is love. Because a lot of times when your partner is out of it, people put you in the old folks' home and they don't come to visit you as much. I've seen it. I deliver pizzas at old folks' home every day. I know what I'm talking about. There are some people that don't get visited. But that man, he was not going to let his wife die without him being there. And that's love. And we love that kind of love. How about Jerry Maguire? You complete me. You had me at hello. I love that. Oh, I love that. And then the Titanic, Jack and Rose. Jack's in the water dangling, holding on to Rose's hand. She's on a piece of driftwood or some kind of wood. And she's floating. She's okay. But he's in the water freezing to death. And when he finally freezes to death, she has to let go so she can be saved. She let him go, but when she let him go, she says, I'll never forget you. She's still holding on with her heart. That's love. And that's great for those kind of, we need those kind of movies that holds on to us and, 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 and talks about that love, everlasting love forever, because that's what the Bible talks about love is. It's a forever thing. However, there are some things that don't quite add up. Some songs like, whoa, what's love got to do, got to do? Tina Turner made that song, didn't she? It was a hit. But Tina, I'm here to tell you, love's got a lot to do with it. That song has always bothered me. But once I realized that I saw Tina's movie, Tina's marriage was not a great marriage. Her husband beat her. That's not love. So to Tina, love was a secondhand emotion. Bless her heart. I'm, I'm, I'm just sorry about that. And we walk around all day long, people want to know, what is love? Baby, you don't hurt me. You know, we don't want to be hurt. We want pure love. We don't, we, you know, you remember that song? What is love? Y'all remember that? Yeah, you get the head going to the Ruxbury. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, we want to know what is love? Uh, and then here's a song called Love Won't Let Me Wait. Now, I, in the sixth grade, I was singing this song. And my mama said, Charles Darnell, stop singing that song. You don't know what you're singing about. I said, Mom, he's singing about love won't let him wait. She goes, wait to what? <laughs> and then I realized as I got older what love, what he was talking about. But love is patient. Love will wait. Major Harris didn't know what he was writing about. He's just trying to write a hit, I guess. And then Dolly Parton wrote, and I, I will always love you. That's a great song. I just love that song. I love that song when, I, when we used to sing that. And then they did, Whitney Houston did it in the movie and really blew the song up. And so that's a great song because it's talking about love and, 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 and everlasting love and for always. That's what we want. And then Foreigner came out with a song. I want to know. I want to know what love is. Let's talk about love. I just love that song. He had a choir backing him up and, and they was, the video was tight. I mean, it's, you know, Foreigner was just great with that song. But we want to know what love is, right? And no matter who you are, no matter how old you are, no matter how young you are, you are looking for love, right? Looking for love in all the wrong places. Looking for love to, you remember that song? Urban Cowboy. 
We're all looking for love. We're all looking for love. What we want is unconditional love. That's what we want. We want unconditional love. Unconditional love is love without limitations and boundaries. It has no conditions. It's just simple love. Love, just, you want people to love you for who you are. You just want, that's what you want. You want people to love you for just who you are. We all want that kind of love. We all want to be simply accepted. We want to be loved when we are in the wrong, when we are in error, when we make a mistake. We want to be loved like, that's what unconditional love does. Unconditional love is if you're going through Walmart and somebody runs over your toe with a shopping cart, you want them to say, you, you, you want to say, that, you know, that you, you're sorry that you did it. You know, you, don't, you didn't do it on purpose, but you're hoping the person doesn't bust your nose, right? Or call the police on you or sue you, right? And they say, hey, I'm all right. It's okay. I know you didn't mean it. You want that kind of love. That's what you want. This is unconditional love at its core. That when somebody offends you, you still love them. That's unconditional love at its core. Luke 6, 27 says, do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who mistreat you. It's a hard thing to do. But the Bible said we need to do it. Luke 6, 35 says, love your enemies. Do good to them. Lend to them without expecting anything back. That's hard to do. But the Bible says it's good for us to do it. Romans 12, 14. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Romans 12, 20. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. I mean, these concepts are not concepts that we sometimes are not accustomed to. But I mean... I've been a Christian for a long time and I'm telling you, I'm just now getting to where I can do some of these things about loving my enemy, about giving him something to eat even though he hates my guts. You know, it takes a long time to build that kind of uh, stamina to love others, that unconditional love to love others. And it takes us getting in the word daily and understanding who God is and what he wants for us to do. 1 Corinthians 13, 7 says, love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. That is what unconditional love is. Unconditional love comes from God. He chose to love mankind first. Turn your Bibles to John 3, 16. And we're going to read 3, 16 and 17. I know you know it by heart, but I want you to really take a look at it today. And, and, and we're going to read verse 16 and 17. And it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And then verse 17 says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. I love 17. Sometimes we don't read 17. But God didn't bring Jesus down here to zap us because we're messing up to condemn us he came to see sent Jesus to save the world because he loved us isn't that great isn't that great to know that even though we mess up God still loves us thank you God I appreciate that I need that in um Romans 5 8 it says while we were still sinners Christ died for us while we were still sinners you know sin to God is a dreadful thing in fact it's so dreadful God can't be around sin he just can't do it so he had to figure out a way that we could be holy in his sight and he sent Jesus to Christ and Christ died for our sins therefore if we have the blood of Christ on us God can look at us and go, that's my child. I love him because he obeyed Jesus. 
So while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's God's unconditional love. 1 John 4, 8 through 10. Uh, basically, it says God is love there. And it says God showed his love among us. He sent his son as a sacrifice for our sins. So once again, we're displaying that unconditional love of God. John 15, verse 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for a friend's life. How many of you could die for your friend right now? How many of you could die for your wife or your husband right now? I mean, it's, it's a tough thing to, to, to do, but I mean, when you truly love them, you can do it. Says so, God. 1 Corinthians 13, 8 says, Love never fails. Love never fails because God is love. God and love are one and the same. And so we need to understand that God loves us unconditionally. We want love. We want unconditional love. And that unconditional love comes from God. Now we need to learn how to love like God. We need to learn now how to love like God. In 1 John 4, 16, it says, God's love, I mean, God is love, whoever loves God, and God, in, and God loves them, or God is in them. Whoever lives in God, God lives in them. Romans 5, 5 says, God's love has poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. John 14, 23 says, Anyone who loves me will obey my teachings. My Father will love him. So if we obey the teachings of the Word of God, God will love us for it. John 13, 34, and 35, Jesus gives a new command to his disciples. And he says, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. Love one another as I have loved you. In doing this, we are learning to love like God. When we put these things into practice, we are learning to love like God. Turn your Bibles to 1 John 1 John chapter 2, we're going to read verses 3 through 6. 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 through 6. It says, We know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands, is a liar, and the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his word, Love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. If anyone obeys his word, the love of God is truly made complete in them. So we must understand God's word. We must read it. We must meditate on it. We must understand what it's saying and then we need to put it into practice. We need to apply it all day long. The people that you work with need to see love through you. And sometimes that's hard. It's hard sometimes in the real world to put that love into practice. Because when somebody's mean to you, you want to be mean back to them, right? But Jesus says, no, do it my way. This is the better way. And so we need to learn how to love like God. It is very important. Now, the conclusion of all this matter is, yes, we want unconditional love. It comes from God. And when we put it into practice, we become loving like God. This next thing I'm going to read is the Christian, I call it the Christian motto. We all should live by this. And this is what it says. Carolyn texted me this a couple of weeks ago, and I did not know I was going to use this. But man, I, I couldn't. Once I started talking about unconditional love, I had to throw this in. 
But this is what it says. A loving heart does good things, chooses good words, and as a result shows others how incredible the incredibly good God's love is. Every day we get to share his love with people right where we are, punctuating for them the power it holds. Love with an exclamation point. Father, make my heart like yours, able to do good things and speak with love. Because with love, love covers a multitude of sins. Love is powerful. When, when Jesus tells us, when somebody strikes you, turn the other cheek, just do it and love them. I know it don't sound great, but just do it. And watch how God works. Watch what God will do. You will be surprised at the outcome. And then finally, verse Romans 12, verse 21 says, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Using love, love, love. Boom, boom, boom. Love, love, love. All we need is love. Isn't that the truth? All we need is love. I got to tell you, the most incredible thing about God's love is when we make that mistake. How many of you remember the prodigal son? He went to his dad and he said, Dad, I want everything that I got coming to me. I want my inheritance. I want your tax money. I want everything I got coming to me, Dad. Give it up. He goes out and he lives it up. He's partying. He's putting out money left and right. He's buying people drinks. He's doing everything. He's karaoke and he's just having a great time. And finally, he's got a bunch of friends around him. I mean, and you know, everybody's loving him because he's the life of the party. But finally, his money runs out. And when his money runs out, he's got to go find a job. And he goes to this farmer and this farmer says, yeah, you can slop my pigs. So he's down there with the hogs and then he's so hungry, he starts to eat what the hogs are eating. Ugh! Because that's gross. I fed hogs. I, they'll eat anything. They'll eat the, the rind on the watermelon. I mean, they'll eat it all. And then it says he came to himself. He was at the bottom. He had nowhere else to go but up. And he thought about Man, I can work for my father and be better off than this. And so he says, man, I'm going home. He picks himself up and he starts walking home. And his father is sitting on the porch. His father sitting on the porch, sees his son afar off, and he runs to meet his son. That is so powerful. And that is our God. No matter what we do, God is there for us. All we got to do is just yell out to him and call out to God. Say, God, I need you. Jesus, I need you. Because when we do that, Jesus is going to come and he's going to take us in no matter what we've done. We might have to still face some consequences, but Jesus is going to help us. And that is unconditional love. And so if you need to come today to say, hey, I've left God, I'm coming back, please do so. If you need Jesus in your life, please come and we will get you that unconditional love that you so need while we stand and sing.